Hey everyone, Nicholas Gowie here, one of your newest video essays for the Michigan Daily. I just transferred to U of M and I've been teeming with excitement at the thought of exploring everything the campus and community has to offer. Though I must say, as I wander around campus, I can't help but notice something. Recently I've been feeling, experiencing something strange. What's the word? How to describe it? Oh yeah, crippling insecurity. Let me be a little more specific. Have you ever looked at an ad or a celebrity, maybe even a mannequin and felt a little shameful, self-conscious maybe? Suddenly you realize you don't have foam abs and soon the thoughts start creeping in. A few pounds off wouldn't hurt. What size is my waist again? Maybe it's time I hit the IM. And most significantly, at least for me as I've been navigating campus, why don't I look like that? And I would definitely describe today's beauty standards for women specifically as, or in general I guess, as impossible. Um, I think it is very hard for anyone, regardless of your body type, size, shape, color, whatever, to maintain such ideals of whatever society media is churning out for body image. I find myself comparing myself to people around me, people I know, um, people I see, like lives I wish I had, of people who just are close to me. So I like can see myself in their circles, but I feel insecure about myself. It's like. You have to have abs, I guess that's sort of, and like being slim, I know there's like the thing of like the thigh gap, it's like better looking or something like that, so um, yeah, just like the quote unquote like the celebrities that do like plastic surgery, like you're supposed to have that without the surgery, I guess. Body image, a concept neglected in the diet-tainted era of the 80s and 90s, has been a rising concern in the modern day, especially in younger generations. Defined as a person's subjective perception of their own body, calling body image an issue is itself reflective of a modern social phenomenon. Nowadays, it seems as though the very concept of body image is inherently negative, even though the definition doesn't mention anything that would invite such pessimism demonstrating how Gen Z nearly ubiquitously thinks of their physical appearances as flawed. According to the Social Media Victims Law Center, researchers found that 80% of women and 34% of men experience negative body image. Those who are unhappy with their looks often experience low self-esteem, depression, and in some cases, eating disorders. It seems as though it is difficult for one to think positively about their own body, especially women, and the results of this self-perception can be terrifying. According to the study, Weight Status and Body Image Perceptions in Adolescents, Current Perspectives, conducted by West Virginia University's Dana Volkner with Justin Real and Christine Greenleaf, by age 17, 78% of U.S. girls are unhappy with their weight, and more than half the teen girls and about one-third of teenage boys engage in unhealthy weight loss behavior such as vomiting, skipping meals, smoking, or taking laxatives. I have friends who, like, you know, are married to the gym, essentially, because they have these ideas about how they should look, and I'm like, get out of the IM. Be chill out. Clearly, negative thoughts of one's body can lead to harmful treatment of said bodies, but why are body image issues so prevalent in the first place? According to sociologist Sabrina Stings, author of Fearing the Black Body, The Racial Origins of Fat Phobia, the history of beauty standards that then frame one's perception of their own body are rooted in racism and reflect a pattern of beauty standards throughout time. They are exclusionary, unrealistic, and unmaintainable. In the 18th century European slave trade, colonizers sought ways to differentiate themselves from their enslaved peoples. These colonizers could no longer use skin color as a marker, as decades of oppression and rape had resulted in less visual differentiation between the colonizers and those they sought to control. The decision was to focus on thinness, with dialogue around Europeans having greater self-control than those they enslaved. This arbitrary distinction and outright lie birthed the stereotype of enslaved peoples being overweight and the idealized European being thin. The notion of thinness having some inherent value carried into the 20th century, where despite efforts by social groups such as the NAAFA to destigmatize fatness, leg warmers and Jenny Craig were far too powerful of forces. What followed was a culture where beauty was defined by thinness and weight loss, often with unattainable standards. This is where you'll find your food demonizations, black and white thinking about nutrition groups, and rhetoric poisoned with diet culture. Certainly, it was a bad time to have a bad body image day. Then came the 2000s, where we again found a rise in body positivity with slightly more progress. The body positivity movement was pioneered in 2008, where it acted as a safe space for minority and marginalized peoples to exist. 
Which brings us to today, where there is an awkward amalgamation of body positivity sentiments existing at the same time as extreme beauty standards that are infesting young minds at an increasing rate. Better yet, now we have companies and influencers preaching body positivity while simultaneously selling products and courses that prey on and motivate customer insecurities. Want to look like me? Buy my training plan and supplements and I promise you will. Tired of not having abs? Buy our machine that just melts the fat right off. We're all being sold a way that a body should look. And so I think people really internalize, I need to be perfect and happy about my body all the time. But at the same time, if I don't look like this, there's something wrong with me. I follow like Lizzo on TikTok because you know she's an icon and a queen. Um, but she still now she has her own like uh, Skims products. Like she has her own like shapewear products. When they think body positivity, they think like it intersects with wellness in a lot of different ways. So I always think about like Gwyneth Paltrow and Goop and like how bullshit that is. Like, like that is like a, a skinny white woman telling us to buy shit we don't need. That's a million and ten dollars to make our lives better. Body positivity is only utilized in capitalism to further exploit people and it doesn't do anything except it doesn't affect people's psyches in any way. Personally, I love capitalism. Essentially, instead of asking why don't I look like that, today's youth are forcefully bombarded with a skyrocketing amount of images that make us wonder how on God's green earth does anybody expect anyone to look like that? Which, due to social pressures and beauty standards, is immediately followed by how can I get myself to look like that? It comes back to the media because everyone's consuming media every single day and so therefore you're seeing these like beautiful people every single day and like society has so widely accepted them as the standard for beauty that it's like why wouldn't you try to achieve that? From an early age we are shown images through media and cultural markers that teach us how to place our value in our aesthetics. The increasing projection of extreme beauty standards through movies, advertisements, and even our dialogue around the holidays where a grandma Kathy just has to stop and is being so bad for eating that extra cookie all work to pressure individuals into looking a certain way and comparing themselves to impossible possible to achieve standards, and research shows that comparison is a lead cause in negative body image. Just what I need. According to this Western University study, more than 90% of women will diet at some point in their lifetime, and more than 70% are unhappy about their physical appearance. Girls as young as 5 years old place an importance on body image and weight that affects their self-esteem and body confidence throughout a lifetime, as motivated by comparisons with tabloid magazines, and there's no reason this data can't be applied to the ever-increasing amount of comparisons one makes with the prevalence of social media. Comparison between bodies has been shown to negatively impact one's perception of their own body. And with the increasing permeation of social media into our everyday lives, it is no wonder that negative body image is so common among younger generations. Well, body image issues are definitely, you know, motivated by, I, th I would say, like, self-produced content, which is sort of proliferating. Like, media today is different because we, we are both the producers and consumers of the, our own media. It's a bit of a really weird camera that gazes on, onto yourself. Stuff like Instagram, I think, is deeply evil when it comes to body image issues because we're just seeing other people, and we're seeing like such a curated, we're seeing other people only looking their best, um, oftentimes like edited or filtered, so it's like even beyond their best, and then just comparing ourselves constantly to that. Um, I know like for me personally, um, I've like struggled in the past with like, oh, I didn't get that many likes on this post. Is it because of what I look like? And again, it is largely due to the fact that these standards are impossible to meet. The body types of women found gracing the covers of celebrity magazines do not match the body type of the average American woman. The typical American woman is 5'4", weighs 140 pounds, and wears a size 8. The typical fashion model is 7 inches taller, 23 pounds lighter, and 6 sizes smaller. The weight of models has dropped considerably in the past 25 years. Even decades ago, models were thinner than the average American woman, and they have become even more underweight over time. If the notion that these standards are literally different from what the majority of the population realistically looks like wasn't enough, the standards also consistently change, leading one to feel constantly dissatisfied with their bodies. It is, you're supposed to be whatever you're not. So as a woman, I can speak on the fact that like I see people who like are skinny, which I'm not. Or if I was skinny, it would be like you need to have big boobs and big ass. Like I don't ha like if you if you're skinny, you not necessarily have those because of the way your body's proportioned. You know, it's like you're supposed to be skinny with big boobs, big tits, big ass. There's this pressure to be confident in your body all the time. So it's this sort of double bind of like you have to look like this. If you don't look like this, you're sh like a problem or whatever. You're bad. Um, but. At the same time, love yourself, love yourself, girl. If you're not loving yourself, you suck. Love yourself always. 
And that like combined feedback is hard to navigate. And it's this constant dissatisfaction that motivates those negative mental states and harmful physical side effects. Over 60% of American women feel so much stressed over their current body weight that it can be classified as a psychological problem. This is known as body image distress, where people feel that they are inadequate because of their physical appearance. While the majority of these stats are reflective of women's body insecurities, men also face unrealistic expectations. For example, similar sentiments of body image distress have been reflected in communities such as bodybuilders, where the standard of beauty necessitates a caffeine addiction and four bottles of tan for the ideal look. I am sick of fake influencers. My issue with it is that these people's lifestyles and physiques are mostly unattainable. I've never claimed to be natural, but know far too many people that do when they're not. Or have even had surgery, but on social media, claim it's a result if they knew the lifestyle changes. Or they just straight up pay someone to perfectly manipulate their pictures. Or buy likes and followers to get paid brand deals for products they don't even believe in. It's no wonder we have an entire generation that simply doesn't feel good enough. Crash diets, eating disorders, restrictive eating, and over-exercising are all responses to feelings of bodily dissatisfaction as a result of comparison to impossible ideals. The uptick in eating disorders has been startling. The same study even found that 9 to 14 year olds were purging in an attempt to quote, look like the figures in the media, and that both boys and girls of this age who had frequent exposure to these standards, quote, were more likely than their peers to develop weight concerns and become constant dieters. Clearly, there are negative physical effects of the proliferation of harsh beauty standards, which, as we've mentioned, have only become more difficult to achieve, yet even more normalized. The mass spread of beauty standards on social media, as well as built-in beauty filters or photo editing on the same social media apps, not only incentivize individuals to look a certain way, but also provide validation via likes and comments that reinforce the fictional standards and any unhealthy habits used to achieve that golden look. Which clarifies as to why so many are seemingly unhappy with their bodies. We live in a time of essentially unlimited comparison to the most impossible to achieve standards humans have ever faced. And it seems as though this notion of comparison seeps into reality, especially for university students, where we inhabit a social jungle that, according to students, doesn't always have the resources conducive to healthy body images. It's a time when we're sort of on our own for the first time a lot, so it's sort of on our own devices to eat how we want to eat, to exercise how we want to exercise. Um, also, the sort of like dating or hookup market of, of college altogether, I think, creates this pressure to look a certain way. I definitely like, you're on your own for the first time, so you're making like health choices, and like dining hall doesn't necessarily provide the best tools and supplies and obviously like people are busy in college so like there's not time to work out or whatever and like it's your time to choose who you are especially in like the spring and summer months when people are like more like o like open to like showing off their bodies things like that that's when certain insecurities can rise um like eating in the, like the dining halls like I feel like a lot of times people might like look at what other people are eating and they're like oh I'm eating more so I should eat less because they're super skinny and I need to be like them. I guess just like being around a lot of people, especially at such a big university, it like kind of just makes people like, I guess competitive in a way that they're like, I need to look the best. I am sick and tired of continuously looking at ads, movies, chiseled mannequins, and even other students without being able to compare myself to them. So instead of falling victim to these extreme beauty standards, let's work to push back against the impossible norms of today's bodily expectations. One thing that has helped me my own anxieties and insecurities is understanding that you do not need to do anything to be worthy of food, love, and a healthy and happy lifestyle, whatever that may look like for you. It's time to stop letting false images make us feel bad about our real bodies. It's time to stop letting standards dictate our happiness, our health, and our lives. It's time to let humans be humans, not some mold of what society wishes we looked like as a result of deeply rooted racist beauty standards. While social media is not the only instigator of negative body image as we continue to navigate the confusing world of modern media, keep in mind how its images and depictions of bodies are affecting the perception of your own. But most importantly, be aware of the fact that you do not need to do anything to be worthy of love, to be valued, and to be deserving of as many likes and comments as anyone else. But also keep in mind that that validation from other people should never be the goal. External validation is never as healthy as internal satisfaction. So be kind to yourself. Call yourself beautiful every now and then. You deserve it.